you know, we were talking about new hams. I got a question online. Alan asked, would you recommend the uh, FT891 for a first HF rig? So I thought that'd be good, you know, good for us to kind of talk a little bit about um, what would be a good first HF radio. So, and I'll start out with what my first HF rig was, and I'll let Joe tell everybody what his is, and then we'll kind of we'll kind of go from there. But when I got licensed uh, way back in '99, well, I had the little HTX10, but then after after a period of time, after I got my general, I decided to invest in an HF transceiver, and then I purchased a brand spanking new ICOM IC718. And uh, it was a nice radio. I had that Which radio. Just got for, rid of last year. I, yeah, I had it for like sixteen. I used it for like sixteen years, and it's good, solid performer. Uh, just basic, just a basic rig with a hot receive and an excellent transmit, and it served me fine. But um, you do get to a point in time where a basic radio, you know, you just, you feel a little bit limited, and you want to kind of stretch out more. So I think it was two years ago. I purchased the FT891, and I had that on my desk for about a year, and I also took it out portable. And then, Leah, this then this last year, I got the FT3000 because I got tired of hooking up and unhooking radios. So, long story short, the 891 makes a good first HF rig. Only downside with it is that everything is hidden in menus, and it's got a little bit more features in it, but. Um, you know, it, it will serve you well as a, as a first rig. So, Joe, why don't you tell us what your first one is? Oh, boy. Because <laughs> yours is a little bit different. And girls. <laughs> so, when I got, I got my general, oh. and I wanted a HF rig. And at the time, you know, I, I didn't have a lot of money to spend on an HF rig. So, I went on Craigslist. Because before Facebook uh, Marketplace, we had Craigslist. And um, I drove three hours one way, uh, and I bought a Kenwood TS520. You know, you're, and some people may be asking, well, what's a 520? I don't see that on their list. Well, that's, it hasn't been made in 40 years. Yeah. Uh, it was a hybrid. So it's a solid-state radio with two finals and a tube exciter. Um, so they are built like a tank. They weigh like a tank. Well, that is true. Uh, yeah. Any of those Kenwood 500, like the 520, 530, and like the 820 to 830, um, made about, they're about 40 years vintage. Um, mm -hmm. They are built like a tank, not like a old helicopter's tank, but a uh, they're built like a tank. And the nice thing about them is you probably aren't going to kill it. No. So I'm So as a new general, if you're going to buy an HF rig and you see a TS520 or a 530 or one of the variants, um, and the price is right and it's in a good, decent condition, grab it because you will learn a heck of a lot because you do actually have to tune the finals like you would mm -hmm. like a little tube radio, but they are solid. They are yeah, yeah. very solid radio, and even today, 40 years later, they're going to work great. Um, and they outgrew it after a while. Uh, and I bought an 891. I do have an 891. It actually sits in my car. It's my mobile rig now. But I had that on the uh, on the bench or in the shack. I've had it portable. It was a portable rig for a while. Um, it's a great radio. Like you said, it's menu driven. Yeah. So you have to kind of learn that there's not a lot of buttons to push. It's a lot of going doot, 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 doot. turn it up, doot, 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 doot. turn it up. You know, and th that that's a little different. Um, but, uh, like I said, you, we both used a portable, and they're perfectly fine. That's yeah. a nice, decent receive. Um, it's got some um, uh, DSP involved with it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for what they're running, the street price is like six hundred dollars. Six, yeah, between six and six fifty, give or give or take. It's, I'm not sure what the. Uh, the exact the exact money is but it's yeah they're they're it's a good deal um and i i think it's you know if, if you ever if you ever have an inkling that you want to go portable it's some you know then go the eight go the 891 route the only downside with the 891 is that it does not have a built-in tuner so 
you'll have to think about getting an external tuner of some sort, unless you're going to be using resonant antennas. And I know a lot of people when they're starting out in HF like to use something like an NFID half wave or a off-center fed dipole. And um, while those can be, um, re if, if you're lucky, you can get them, you can get them resonant. A lot of times you need a tuner to kind of right. knock the edges off of them. But um, right. so keep that in mind, you know, if you're investing in an 891, get, you know, you're going to need a, either, either a good manual tuner or an auto tuner. And um, I actually recommend a manual tuner starting out uh, anyway. It's uh, uh, yeah, a manual tuner, unless you're mm -hmm. using one of those old two brakes. If it's yeah. got two panels, don't really mess around with a manual tuner unless you got some exotic antennas because the finals in those old tube uh, 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 transceivers, you, you can really tune that out back there. It, yeah. Just amazing. Uh, and, actually, and a couple of people on a couple of comments. If you can't find a uh, TS520, a Yesu FT101 or one of the variants of those as well, they use the yeah. same tunes for the finals, a 6146. Um, yep. they are just like I said, you could put a bullet through them and you can still probably get up on 40. Oh, yeah, I'll just say and that's, that the nice, that's the nice thing about it with, with the tube final, you know, um, rig is that that um, that final it's it's um, it, it you know, as as it goes to the antenna, that that those those tubes are in a pie network, so mm -hmm. that acts like a tuner, uh, an antenna tuner. It you know, if your antenna is not resonant. You can you can fix that at the rig as you're as you're tweaking the tweaking the finals. So absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see a couple others. I just want to kind of. Uh, we'll say thank you, to Bill. Yep. So talk to yeah, Bill. Thank you very much uh, for your contributions. Greatly appreciated. Uh, first radios taking a text. Thinking of an FT nine ninety one of our first radio. Uh, 991 is great you know that's that's like the the next step up um sh they call that the shack in a box because it does dc to daylight and um and c4 fm and c4 <laughs> yeah built-in system yeah. fusion so it's yeah. um it's a good it's a very nice that's a very nice radio and yeah, it, it is now one thing to consider you you're about to take your tech exam mm -hmm. just remember don't paint yourself in a box um Explore all your options in amateur radio. Yeah. What I was into five years ago, what I thought I was going to get into, totally different. I could care less about some of those things right now. Um, so just think about it before you drop twelve hundred dollars out of nine ninety one A. It haven't delivered to Michael It's a good radio. It's uh, they're, they're, it's yeah, a very they're, good radio. Don't get me wrong. It's a very good radio, but don't point. Uh, don't paint yourself into one of a box where like, I'm going to go do this as soon as I get my license because yeah. you're going to grow and fall uh, evolve as an amateur radio operator, and what you do, want to do now is going to be different from what you want to do five years from now. Mm -hmm. Guarantee it. Um, so play the field, you know, if you're a single guy, you play the field. If you're a new ham radio operator, play the field, get a decent little HT, uh, get on the repeaters, play around, play with packets, you know, cause playing with packet, even though a lot of people don't do packet, it yep. teaches you a lot of things about how getting stuff to work together. Um, meet some people, uh, experiment. And then when you're ready to drop, Twelve, fifteen hundred dollars on a real nice radio. Uh, you have an idea of what you want to do, and then yeah. that twelve or fifteen hundred dollars is not going to be a paperweight next year on your on your table when you know you're kind of out of it. So there you go, there you go. So, and um, yeah, it's a couple other first radios. Steve's um, got the FT four fifty D. Unfortunately, they just discontinued oh, the four fifty D. But that's a beautiful. That's a beautiful first timers rig, and yep. it. If I was if I was starting out, and um, I was the, the 450 was available to me, I would have I would have picked that up over the the 718. Uh, Marty got tired of his 891, taking it out of the car, so he bought a second one. They're nice <laughs> radios. <laughs> I got tired of yeah, I, I got tired of unplugging mine on the on the desk, so I bought a 3000. <laughs> Um, my first is Yesu FT920, still using it. 
that's um, good. You know, that that's another um, discontinued. The is a great radio. Um, yeah. Yesu, uh, Yesu has built some radios that just stand the test of time. The yeah. 101 series, um, now the FTDX series, um, some of the 900 series, uh, 940, the 950. There, I mean, the, 850, the 897. <laughs> 897 oh, yeah. is like literally it's built like a military radio yeah. you can throw that off a cliff and it'll still work um yeah. let's see ft 301 ad 301. see 301. The, like the yeah. 101s 201s 301s they had a whole yep. series of them they were most of them were still two finals until the final ones but they were great the, the 201s 301s i think have digital displays too they don't have a uh, analog dial so if you mm -hmm. don't want to you know, mess around with analog, those 201s, 301s, maybe something to look for. Yeah. And Todd's dreaming of the 7300, which is <laughs> um, beautiful. It's a beautiful you know. radio. It's a uh, good price, too, actually. It's. Uh... Yeah. Hey, thanks for watching. Do you have any questions or comments? Well, please leave them in the comment area below. I'll filter through them, and who knows, you know, maybe yours will end up in our next Your Questions Answered live stream. For more articles and information, though, please check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. Your support of this channel drives the production of future videos, so check us out on Patreon. Patrons gain access to exclusive content, and our patrons help keep the mission alive. That's over on patreon.com slash kb9vbrantennas. Also, give us a thumbs up if you like this video, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button, especially if it's your first time here. That's your best way to be notified when a new video is released. Well, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day, and 73.